familiar your stators like your alternator and your rotors like the pulley and it creates a magnetic field around the stator and the regulator rectifies and regulates voltage coming in from the stator. Stators are fairly simple in their operation and their problems fall into two categories shorts and opens so a short circuit is when the wires in the windings or the lead wire make an electrical connection someplace they shouldn't and shorts can be from a winding to winding or like a winding to ground from being overheated and then an open circuit would occur if the wire breaks in between there it's pretty common winding to winding shorts or opens will cause low stator voltage and remember the stator screws that hold on there are torque to yield so they are not reusable test an open circuit by the ohm method but the 12 volt test light is much more time efficient so to do a stator resistance test you must not have the engine running and you must not allow your hands or fingers to touch the meter leads or any grounded portion so first you want to locate the three wires coming from your stator primary and within the multi-connector disconnect that connector and from there you're going to switch your multimeter to the ohm scale times one and before probing these pins you're going to want to connect the meter leads together and read and record the display set either at three so you're going to want to subtract that reading from the stator resistance after you complete all your readings from there you're going to probe the stator wire and record the resistance between each of these pins. So go 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 2 to 3, and so on and so forth until you have all your readings and can subtract them. This is an example to rationalize this. So to calculate you're going to connect your meter leads together and if your meter reads 0.7 ohms off just the resistance of the DMM, then you're going to measure the state of resistance off of each of these pins. And let's say your meter reads 1.10 ohms, so you're going to subtract the 0.7 ohms from the lead resistance. So your true reading is really 0.4 ohms, which is the true stator winding resistance. Rule of thumb is that your stator resistance should be within a range of 1 to 5 ohms. However, this reading may vary depending on your system. Therefore, always check your climber for first timers and service manual for the specific resistance for your model regarding the charting system. This was just an example of how to check a three wire stator. As long as your readings are close to the same, your stator should be okay. However, stators can have the correct ohm reading but not put out ample wattage or voltage. Motor problems on modified engines are much more prevalent than stock. And so what you can have happen is the spline just straight up strips out. The magnets are pretty common to just delaminate and start destroying whatever else in there. And then sometimes this rotor shell can just straight up break or crack. So be careful. Problems will result in low stator voltage and the sound of rocks in your primary if it delaminates and you can upgrade it with the sealed units so that you never have to worry about that magnet detaching. So that's really handy. Okay, so again, you're gonna locate the two or three pin connector, go into like the regulator usually, and you're gonna disconnect it obviously and get your DMM your digital multimeter put it over here on AC volts and now we're going to test this so in order to do this you will need to start the engine and let it run at idle and once doing that you can test each of these pins and you'll get an accurate reading on a three phase system there are going to be three separate windings hooked to end to end Still gonna be on AC volts. And so you're gonna check the pin again. Go one to two, two to three. Then 
one to three just to get a good reading and this will test all three windings and they should all read the same voltage at the same rpm and while this is a good test of the output function stator that is grounded to a short may still produce ac voltage from pin to pin the problem with this is the rectifier changes the ac to dc current and then uses the ground as one leg of the dc so when the stator shorts out to ac and dc get mixed together therefore the best way to test for short to ground is with an automotive 12 volt test light because an ohm meter or a voltage meter will not pick up a short to ground sometimes so it's better using your automotive 12 volt test light connect the ground clip to a good ground like your frame or engine and then verify it's working by touching your battery and it should light up and once you indicated that you're ready to start the test so you're going to unplug your stator from your regulator and at that time start the motor and you're going to probe each of these pins and if the bulb lights up when connected between any of the stator plug pins and ground then the stator is shorted and needs to be replaced if you get good proper ac voltage and the stator is not grounded which means there's no light the stator and rotor are good you can assume at this point you can assume that there's a bad connection with the regulator or maybe your regulator is just bad anyone who rides an older harley and especially 97 to 05 flh understand that your stator does not last as long as you think it would so in order to understand why now we gotta understand how harley screwed this up so in um, 1995 they made their first fuel injected motorcycle and in order to uh, accommodate for that they created the 38 amp system and this system was pretty good and reliable the only problem was that the 97 up dressers really needed more power so instead of you know designing a new system harley and their infinite wisdom created a charging system that can overdo itself so they put a 45 amp stator and a 38 amp rotor and it just cooks itself after about i'd say 450 degrees so the system will put out 30 amps at 1000 rpm and 54 amps maximum when drawing over 45 amps out of the system this stator will produce heat faster than it can get rid of it the temperature of the stator will rise until it gets hot enough to melt the insulation and once the insulation burns up the stator it shorts out and will no longer work this is why i'm so persistent on using cycloelectric products only so most other stators will melt at like 425 degrees and by 450 they're absolutely toast so cycloelectric develops theirs to withstand 600 degrees and unfortunately it's still not good enough because if your 48 amp system which is the same as a 45 amp system in 99 they called it the 48 amp but drawing the full power out of this 45 or 48 amp system will draw 54 amps and will result in temperatures this high of 600 degrees the drawback to using the rare earth magnets is they produce an AC waveform that produces a harsh delivery. Alternators produce AC, and if you made a graph plotting AC voltage against time, it would make a reciprocating wave. Ideally, it would make what's known as a sine wave. It has a rounded, almost semi-circle shape to it. And the most commonly used ceramic magnets nowadays use that wave to rise and drop more gradually and the stronger magnets used on the 48 amp rotor produces the square wave the square wave produces a very fast change of voltage which lead to very high spikes in current and these spikes produce a lot of heat and go hard on the regulator battery and many other electrical components a lot of people ask what's the big difference between a 48 amp single phase and then a 50 amp three phase so the single phase is simpler of the two it's just a single wire wrapped around every pole of the stator and this means that it's going to generate ac power quickly but there's going to be a moment where the stator is going to generate no current as it reaches zero volts but this will be so fast you won't even notice it and for that reason these require more rpm to 
make power and almost double their output once they're at that high RPM. Rephase is basically the same idea, except for there's three separate coils wrapped around each stator. So just like on the single phase stator, each turn will be near zero volts. But the difference is when one phase of the three phase stator hits near zero, the other two are still producing around 75% of their maximum output, resulting in a lot more power and electricity generated at all times, which means it's a lot less dependent on RPM and more consistent. The three phase will be much smoother in operation. It has three sets of charging coils that produce offset 120 degrees from each other. So it's like having a motor with three smaller pistons instead of a big one. So you achieve more power simply by adding two extra windings. To summarize phases, the one phase power is not constant and the average power is half than its maximum. The two phase power output is constant at every instant and the average power is equal to the maximum power of one phase. And the three phase is also constant at every instance and the average power is one and a half times the power of one phase. If all you need is just the stator or regulator, obviously it's gonna be more economical to just replace that part. However, if you're having chronic issues with your stator, it's best just to get this over with with a 50 amp charging kit. All thing considered, I would only recommend a 50 amp kit with all their products being made here in the US and they have a two year warranty if you use their regulator too. So that's why I like them. And I've seen plenty of these 50 amp kits go well over six years with zero issues. Just shoot me a subscribe and like if this was beneficial or helpful. And if you know anything that might be a benefit to anyone else, leave it in the comments.